This video will show you how to get started with ArcGIS Pro. Prior to launching ArcGIS Pro, you'll need to make sure you have a valid Esri account with ArcGIS Pro permissions. So reach out either to the license administrator or your instructor for additional information. When you start ArcGIS Pro, you'll be prompted to log in with your Ezra account. Once again, you must make sure you have adequate permissions to log into ArcGIS Pro. You'll then be taken to the ArcGIS Pro project, where you can open a recent project or create a new project using a template. In this example, we'll go with the map template. We're going to create a new project by specifying the name and then specifying the location. We're also going to leave the default checkbox for creating a new folder for this particular project. This way, the ArcGIS project files will all be contained within a single folder. Your initial view in ArcGIS Pro will depend on the template you selected. In this case, I've got a map or 2D template. And I'm going to go in and adjust the base map to change it from the topographic map to the imagery layer with labels. The Explore tool is selected by default. It allows me to pan and zoom around the map using my mouse. There are different ways of adding data. I can do it via the Add Data button on the top menu, or I can go over to the side and open the Catalog window. The Catalog window gives you a little bit more functionality. Here I'm opening the Catalog window and I'm going to pin it to ArcGIS Pro so that it stays open. Within my folders, you can see my home folder for this project is the demo project folder I created when I created my ArcGIS Pro project. Now I'm going to right click and add a new folder connection to navigate to other locations where I have GIS data stored. This folder I've just connected to contains some deer wintering data. I'm going to drag and drop it into my ArcGIS Pro map. Once I've loaded it into ArcGIS, I'm going to unpin the catalog so I have more real estate for viewing my data. Clicking on any of these deer wintering polygons will open up the attributes for that individual polygon. In certain cases, you may find it useful to adjust your project options. Go into the project menu, scroll down until options, and here you can find things like the default location of your project, the home folder, and the default geo database. Adjusting things like the default geo database may come in handy if you decide you want all of your outputs to go to a different location. It's always nice to give your maps and layers meaningful names. Here I'm going to change the name of my map by clicking on it once and then calling it the deer map. You can see it automatically adjusts the tab up above. I'm also going to rename the deer wintering areas, removing the underscores. Clicking on the color for the deer wintering areas will open up the symbology tab. I can go into the symbology tab and adjust the display properties of those polygons, changing both the fill color and the outline color. I'm also going to go to the Appearance tab up top and adjust the transparency to make my polygons more transparent so I can see through to the imagery below. The layout is where you put all your map elements together to create a real map with scale bars, legends, etc. To do this, go to the Insert menu and choose New Layout, and then select the appropriate format for your layout. Once you've created your layout, you can add one or more of the map frames you already have in your project. A map is good for 2D data, but if you have 3D data, you want to insert something called a scene. When you insert a scene, just as you did with the layout, you're going to see a new tab appear in your ArcGIS project. Once you've created your scene, you can add some data, but it's only going to appear in 3D if it has 3D properties.
When working in 3D, your controls will be a little bit different. Not only can you pan and zoom, but you can tilt, swivel, and carry out other 3D functions.